Now, if you're a WordPress user, you'll know that security is a very, very important thing. Lots of WordPress sites get hacked every single day, which is understandable with 43% of the internet powered by WordPress. This has already been brought home recently with what's happened with Quickly and with Bricks Builder. No disrespect to those guys, they acted incredibly promptly and updated the software accordingly. But it does bring home the need for security when it comes to WordPress and just a little bit extra peace of mind. Now, first of all, let me quickly say, I am by no means any kind of security expert. What these recent events have done is they've made me look into and reinforce what I do on a daily basis with my websites. And what I wanna do in this video is just go over some of the things that I think you should do. I'll give some software recommendations where I think appropriate, but please do your, do your own due diligence. And if anybody knows that anything I say isn't 100% correct, or there's some nuances, or they just wanna expand upon what I've covered, please do put comments in the comment section down below, and I will collate and pin those just to make sure that everybody can check out that first comment and get as much useful information as possible. Okay, so without further ado, let's take a look at the eight different areas that I think we need to address to help improve the security when it comes to WordPress. So number one, good quality hosting with security measures in place. I think this is probably one of the most important things because if there's one thing I learned from the comments around the recent problems that we've had with some of the tools that I use, lots of people that had great hosting companies that were proactive didn't have any issues whatsoever. So it just highlights the fact that good quality hosting is vitally important. But there are a couple of things I do recommend you look out for when you are looking for hosting or if you want to review your current hosting to see if they're up to scratch for what you need for security. First of all, you do need to make sure that they have some type of WAF, which is basically a web application firewall. This is more at a server level. You can still put things on your own website, and we'll come onto those a little later, but a server level application firewall is going to be more effective than having a plugin sitting on top of WordPress. I'm not gonna go into technical details why this is the case, but just consider the fact that if you have a host that has a web application firewall as part of it, that's gonna give you an extra level of security that you may not get by using standard plugins. Next up, you wanna make sure that any of the sites that are on the server that you're using, whether they're your sites or the other people's sites, are siloed. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? Well, siloed basically means that each one of them is an independently protected website. So if something happens to one of your websites, all of your other websites don't get affected. This is something that is incredibly important to make sure that you have included as part of any hosting company. Just means it gives you another peace of mind that if one of your sites or a couple of your sites get hacked or insecure, all of your sites don't get affected. Thirdly, when it comes to hosting companies, make sure that you have regular updates. As a bare minimum, you want to have a daily update in place because sometimes it's too late, your site has been hacked, and the only way to get everything back up and running is to find out the last date that there was nothing wrong and then roll back to that and update accordingly. And that way you cut out any issues in between. And again, this goes hand in hand with that silo side of things. If you've got site siloed, if one gets compromised, you know you can roll back to where everything was okay and other sites are not gonna have been affected and therefore you don't have to go and retrospectively go and update or back up all of those sites. Moving on to my second point. This goes hand in hand with what we've just said. This is having backups. Now you've already got your hosting company doing daily backups for you, which I hope you have anyway. Next, you wanna make sure you've got another line of defense, which basically means you have something on your own account inside your own website that's doing backups automatically. I use WP Vivid Backup Pro, and I have this set up on my site to do daily backups that are pushed to cloud storage off the server. Why? Because if something happens to the actual server itself, then your backups could become corrupted or worse still, lost. So if you've got something that takes a backup on a daily or hourly basis if you have a very busy site, and it's off-site in cloud storage. If you had to move your site, restore the server, whatever it is, you've got an independent backup copy of that that you could put back online very quickly, even if your main backups inside your hosting account have been corrupted or lost. Next on the agenda, point three, is to have a security plugin like Solid Security. This also ideally would have some type of firewall included, but like I say, you're still always better off having that web application firewall on your server as well. What we're trying to set up here are multiple lines of defense, not just one hopefully to catch all everything solution, because I don't think there is one. You need multiple lines of defense to help. If one gets compromised, you can still have additional lines of defense in between. And like I say, worst case scenario, 
you've got fresh backups stored over the last 10, 14, 28 days that you can roll back to should you need to. But making sure you have something like solid security installed gives you very useful tools, including things like monitoring file changes, two-factor authentication, which we'll come on to a little later, lots of different options included. And like I say, if you've got a firewall, even better. Once you've got those set up, you've got a nice line of defense. But again, these all work in conjunction with each other. Always keep that one in mind. So two-factor authentication, what exactly is it and why should you use it? Well, my tool of choice, Solid Security, has two-factor authentication included in it. And what this basically means is when you go to log into your website, you'll have one of a couple of different methods of confirming it to you. It could be something as simple as you put your username and your password in and then it will send you an email with a dedicated code that changes every few seconds or every time you try to log in. You have to put that code in before you can access the site. Another way of doing it is you can have authentication apps on your phone and this will pop up a little sort of QR code that you have to scan in and that will confirm that it's you. There's various different methods in which you can use two-factor authentication, but I do highly recommend you have this as part of whatever setup you have. Again, it's another level of security that you have in place to complement all the other ones you put into place as well. Now let's go back to firewalls, because firewalls, as their name suggests, will help to block incoming kind of attacks and so on, and various different things that are being done to try to get access to your website and find vulnerabilities that may be there, especially when it comes to plugins, themes, or maybe even server level insecurities that you may have in place. This is where another level comes in handy, and this is a very popular way of handling things. It's called either 6G or 7G or now 8G firewall. And these are basically a set of rules that handle a lot of different ways that your site is tried to be accessed via the URL and various different methods. And you simply add this to your HT access file. It's totally free, doesn't cost you a single penny, takes no more than a couple of minutes to set up, and it adds in a lot of additional protection. Like I say, adding this to everything else is where the benefit comes in. It's totally free, it's very simple, and if you want me to show you exactly how to do it, let me have a comment down below. I'll take a look at creating a quick video to show you exactly how to get everything set up using either 6, 7, or 8G firewall, 8G being the latest at the time of this video. Now, another tool that I brought into my tech stack very recently that gives another level of security and peace of mind is Patch Stack. Now, Patch Stack is well renowned for knowing about vulnerabilities and so on, informing the developers, making sure they get things patched, and then notifying their users before they make it publicly available. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Nothing like this actually is. But it does give you an extra layer of security because not only can you use this to have hardening like IP block lists and advanced hardening like using the WordPress modules to handle various different things as well as generic OWASP, it gives you v-patching. Now, v-patching is very useful. You can use this to automatically patch what you want in your site if there's a vulnerability in it. It's an optional option. You don't have to enable it, and you can set it on a site-by-site -site basis. But what it means is, for example, with a Bricks vulnerability was recently, once that update was brought out, if I hadn't seen the email, wasn't checking, I could have been on holiday or something, I've got it set up that if there's any vulnerabilities on any of my sites being monitored by PatchTac, it will automatically install that updated plugin theme, whatever it is, or core, to make sure that I've got that in place and I don't have to worry about it. Now, I can set that up to be for themes and plugins and so on for just general updates as they come out. But as a bare minimum, I've got this set up to do the v-patching side of things. So this adds an extra layer of protection alongside the sort of options for firewall hardening and so on. There's a lot of different things inside you. I've done a video on this, which I'll link in the description so you can check that out. But that's another tool that I've added into another layer of protection to my websites. Now, talking about the plugins and so on and updates, the most important thing you can do when it comes to WordPress is make sure that you have all of your themes, your plugins, your WordPress core are all up to date. Why? Well, because as we just already talked about, there's always vulnerabilities. WordPress is notorious for having vulnerabilities when it comes to plugins and themes, outdated plugins, plugins and themes that are no longer being supported or being actively developed. There's a million different reasons why. But if you've got plugins that are no longer supported, get rid of them, find alternatives, or unfortunately, maybe lose that functionality. But as soon as the updates come out, take a backup of your website and update if you can. Now, obviously, this isn't always ideal or perfect, so you may have different plans in place, but it's always worth bearing in mind, even if you don't update there and then, 
If there's a known vulnerability, bypass what you do normally and update that plugin. But make a backup beforehand, a manual backup so you can test it out. Even use a staging site if you've got the time to do it. But try to keep everything updated. It's most, one of the most important things you can do when it comes to WordPress. And finally, some basic good housekeeping. Don't use things like admin for your username. Don't use silly passwords. Don't use easily recognizable names and things like that. Try to use things that are obscure. You know, minimum of like eight characters of uppercase, lowercase numbers and symbols, for example, for passwords. The longer, the better, the more random, the better. And what I would also recommend is making sure that you have a plugin like Solid Security does this that enforces the use of strong passwords. It doesn't allow you to use duplicates. You can have ones that will check for compromised passwords. And then if you try to use that password, whether you, it's yours that's been compromised or not, it will tell you you can't use it and you have to pick something else. Same thing goes for unique usernames or unique sort of nicknames when it comes to WordPress. Lots of different ways you can handle this. Solid Security does it for you, but you can probably find plugins that also enforce this side of things. But combining all of these types of security measures in place, which may seem absolute overkill, but the whole point is to have multiple different layers. And once you set these kinds of things up, create your standard blueprint website with all these things basically set up, even save out the standard sort of settings that you use with them, and you can get all this up and running in a matter of 10, 15 minutes, and your site is probably more secure than it probably is now for 99% of users out there at the moment that don't necessarily know or understand the security things we have to put in place. Anyway, as I said at the top of the video, if anything I've said could be expanded upon, improved upon, let me have in the comments down below. And like I say, I'll combine these and pin them to the top of this video, and then you can check those out to get up-to-date information should you need to. Hopefully you found this useful. All applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.